The most important principle in marketing is you cannot worm your way into someone's mind, little by little with arguments and logic and this and that. You have to blast your way in. And so I am blasting my way into people's minds with the Darth Vader costume, with the lightsaber, with the provocative songs. That's why. So, this song is based on the classic Georgie Girl, the 1967 classic from The Seekers, the Australian brand. And we've transformed it to New Washington. And feel free to dance. Ow! Hey there, Washington, sucking on a joint so fancy free. Nobody you meet could ever see the deadly cartels inside you. Hey there, Washington, why do other states just pass you by? Could it be you just don't try, or is it the what drug What would cartel? be those public policy changes that would eradicate criminal drug cartels? And I have a poster here that, that summarizes uh, the, the, the strategy. Starts with the question, how do we get rid of criminal drug cartels? Number one, repeal prohibition. And when I say repeal prohibition, I'm talking about repealing federal prohibition, which is unconstitutional per the 10th Amendment. Flagrantly unconstitutional. This is a state's rights issue. And I'm not saying that prohibition itself is unconstitutional. I'm saying that federal prohibition is unconstitutional. Look, if the state of Mississippi wants to prohibit heroin, that's their business. But it's not the federal government's right to make that decision for the state of Mississippi or the state of Washington or any other of the 50 states or the District of Columbia for that matter. Second point, replace prohibition with, and you notice how I have a big blank here. I have some thoughts as to what we might replace prohibition with, but the point here of this image is that it is up to Washington, Washington State, to determine our own answer for what do we replace prohibition with. And uh, for example, we might replace it with a market system where government-run uh, clinics dispense uh, the drugs, tested uh, with all kinds of safety precautions, and where we look at the customer not as a profit-generating customer, this is why I think it should be government-run. This is just my opinion, right? This is for all of us to figure and fill in the blank, not for Jamin to come along and say, oh, this is what it should be. It's for all of us to figure out. So, um, but just, to, be, but just to, you know, to, to flesh out the example, if we have these government-run clinics that look at the, at the customer, not as a customer, but as a patient, and in many cases, as a patient who's suffering from an illness, a disease, an addiction, we can look at them holistically, we can treat them holistically. We can say, yes, we will dispense your heroin to you, but first we, you know, we want to take your blood pressure and ask you a few questions, make sure you're in a healthy enough state. And number two, one of the questions is, are you a, you know, are you a casual user? Are you a, a recreational user? Are you an addict? And if so, do you want to lose the addiction? Because we have so many great programs to help you do that if you do, right? So. You see how this is so important that if, if we were to go with this scenario, it would be government run rather than private sector because the private sector, they just want to sell more heroin, right? These government run clinics, their objective is actually to reduce harm, reduce addiction, and ultimately reduce usage. So the ones who are dispensing the drugs actually are incentivized to reduce consumption and reduce harm. So that's a radical idea and there's a lot of radical ideas out there. But my main point is, it's up to all of us to figure this out. We'll cut you down. You won't get up again, so you better get out of town. We'll cut you down. You won't get up again, so you better get out of town. Criminal drug cartels. Criminal drug cartels. So the question has come up, what is this criminal drug cartel thing have to do with climate change? And there, there's kind of a big answer to that simple question, okay? So I'm, gonna, I'm first gonna frame the answer in the following terms. Right now, we are on a highway to hell. We're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction and human, the human species is slated for extinction along with most other species as abrupt climate change accelerates. So, um, we need to find an off-ramp from this highway to hell. 
So I have proposed a complete holistic off-ramp, which is represented by this blue arrow here, and that's where the two intersect. The beginning of the off-ramp is getting rid of criminal drug cartels, which, as I mentioned earlier, we can do very easily, very safely, literally with the stroke of a pen, we can repeal federal prohibition, and thus uh, uh, knock out the foundation, the economic foundation, of the criminal drug cartels. So, um, by eliminating the criminal drug cartels, we will amass an enormous amount of political capital because we will have solved a major world problem. With that political capital, we expand the mandate from just criminal drug cartels to all forms of organized crime. And then comes, and then as we, as we expand that mandate and as we're ridding the world of Sicilian mafia, Russian mafia, Brazilian mafia, Japanese Yakuza, and all other forms of mafia around the world, we then gain massively more political capital. And we then uh, leverage that for the third, the third and most important inflection point is including organized crimes against Mother Earth herself in what we call organized crime. So that's how we, that's how we stop the harm, the harms caused against Mother Earth, and then we start the healing. So criminal drug cartels provide an extremely convenient first step towards starting to veer off of the superhighway to hell and onto the off-ramp that takes us to safety. So pe people ask me, okay, you know, how, how will students who are interested in your vision, how can they get involved? The first step is to come up and just join the conversation. Learn more about what I'm talking about here and also put forward their own ideas, their own vision for what an off-ramp might look like from this highway to hell. So I really want to um, encourage and foment a culture of exploration and a culture of staring reality in the face. The reality of criminal drug cartels and the harms that they cause, the reality of all the organized crimes against Mother Earth and all the harms that, that they're causing, and the reality of abrupt climate change. This is not something that we uh, are built to handle, right? We're built to farm, we're built to hunt, we're built to procreate. And we're built to really stay focused on those tasks that will make us successful. In a constant climate, we evolved in a relatively constant climate, an, an, an abnormally cool period that we've experienced for the last several million, several million years. Uh, but we are rapidly uh, bouncing out of that cool period into the hot zone, uh, where planet Earth has actually spent most of the last several hundred million years in a hothouse state. So we're, back to, we're, we're heading back to that uh, more stable hothouse state. Um, we urgently need to completely shift our mindset and go beyond those normal stimuli that motivate our decisions, our planning, our actions, what we're gonna do, what we're gonna study, what kind of job we're gonna get. Because right now, let's, let, just, just to make it really simple, put it in really simple terms, uh, as a man, I am programmed to want to procreate. And so, you know, how do I do that? Well, I look around and I see, okay, well, how are other men being successful procreating? Oh, well, they, you know, they, they hoard a bunch of money and they buy or build a big house and have a bunch of cars and, and that seems to attract women to the nest. Right, that's the traditional view. I'm not saying I support that. But uh, I'm just putting it in kind of cartoon-like terms. We need to snap out of that. And that's not a necessarily very easy thing to do. Um, but we need to understand the nature of our predicament, that we're programmed towards a certain set of behaviors. But we need to think at a planetary scale, which is not something we're programmed to do. So we need to change our own programming and think at a planetary scale, and think in terms of holistic solutions that will get us off of this highway to hell, where we probably have only a few years left to do something borderline miraculous. And I have a lot more to say about that, but this is a big topic. So um, the, the question has come up, you know, what do I think about how President Trump is handling the, the Philippines and all the funding to exterminate not just drug cartels in the Philippines, but drug users? Um, I think it, that is a crime against humanity, and I think it is absolutely counterproductive. In fact, 
the the thing that made criminal drug cartels so violent, so rich, and so powerful, if I can if I can use that word, um, is precisely prohibition and the war on drugs. That's what made them powerful. See, when they were just smuggling and there wasn't this big war on drugs and there wasn't a bunch of arms and violence brought into the equation, these were just quiet smugglers who were quietly flying their little Cessna planes full of drugs and, you know, making some money. Um, when, when the federal government of the United States brought violence into it and when the Mexican government, not the Fox administration, but uh, Calderon after, after Fox, um, when they brought violence into the equation, that's what made the drug cartels take a lot of their hoarded earnings and buy a bunch of arms and train a bunch of armies and kidnap a bunch of kids and force them onto the front line. So it's innocent kids who've been kidnapped, a lot of them coming up from Central America, uh, fleeing the American-fueled violence in Central America. Uh, they kidnap them as they're trying to work their way through Mexico to safety. They kidnap them and put them on the front lines and boom, they get mowed down. So we've lost 100,000 of our uh, young men, mostly young men, also, young, also women as well, um, to the drug war. And it's because of the violence. So I think, I predict that the violence that, that uh, I hate to say President, President Trump is imparting on the Philippines is only going to make the situation worse. And what are going to emerge are some very powerful, very heavily armed criminal drug cartels in and around the Philippines. Uh, so bad idea, terrible idea, not just bad idea, it's an atrocity. So, so I've been asking, you know, why have you chosen the UW campus as opposed to going straight to Washington, D.C.? Um, number one, it's a great way to highlight the state's rights issue. Number one, I, I live here. This is my home. And um, I actually did my undergraduate at UC Berkeley, which is notorious for being a radical campus, all kinds of protests and whatnot. And I, I see the, I've seen the University of Washington in recent decades as being a pretty calm, quiet place. So it looked like a perfect place to make a splash. Also, the, sim the symbolism. This is the state of Washington, right? Um, and so there's tremendous symbolic value to liberating the state of Washington as the first state uh, to, to free ourselves from criminal drug cartels. Uh, and, I, and I do plan to take this show on the road, do a nationwide tour, uh, stop in various different cities across the country, uh, including notably New York City. I want to hit the New York Stock Exchange, Times Square, uh, but end up in Washington, D.C., where I will proclaim um, with a number of supporters, uh, which could be a very large number at that point, President Trump, tear down this wall.